Hey, welcome back guys. Snowfall's premiere was split into two parts, as we know. And this video will serve as the second breakdown for our top 10 WTF moments. The second episode was entitled Wait, so let's get into this thing. Before we begin, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and bell notification to immediately receive these videos. Also, big thank you to all of my channel donors. If you'd like to be the next one, drop a dollar on that cash app for us. Lastly, a spoiler alert is now in effect for all things Snowfall. Here we go. WTF moment number 10, The Vibes. Franklin sets Scully and his crew up to take a fall by Man Boys Collective in hopes of finally ending the protracted gang war. Already paranoid due to the tense nature of the situation, Scully approaches gun in hand, rightly calling out the vibes and the roaches. A soldier of Man Boys blows the plot and Franklin's cover by preemptively firing on Scully, leading to all-out chaos and destruction. WTF moment number nine, a favor. Following the violent assault, Franklin visits Tanase and asks her to inquire about Scully's life or death status. Apprehensively, she agrees and later discovers that Scully's not just breathing, but hot with rage after Franklin's attempt on his life. He'll surely be breathing fire come episode three. WTF moment number eight, everything's fine. Franklin and his team meet with Man Boy and much to the former surprise, Man Boy reveals that Scully is no more after taking gunfire courtesy of his Uzi. He then seemingly taunts a visibly shaken Franklin and leaves him with, we're good then, everything's fine. Nothing could be further from the truth. WTF moment number seven, The Shakedown part two. Reed and Oso meet again with Officer Fuentes, the latter finally naming his look the other way fee, $100,000. The exorbitant price tag is heavily rebuffed by Reed, whose initial offer of 10,000 would only be maxed at 50K, much to the officer's dismay. Fuentes then aimed a cryptic threat towards Hernan and agreed to give Reed and his crew a few days to iron out his payment particulars. WTF moment number six, Skull and Stones. Following Tanase's revelation of Scully's survival to Franklin, a wounded Scully is shown, plucking Man Boy's bullet from his arm and soldering the gash with whiskey straight. He then furiously orders his gang to find Franklin Saint, vowing to not only crucify the already hampered drug lord, but stone him as well. It's not looking good for our boy. WTF moment number five, Nicks and Crannies. Franklin meets with Nicks and offers him the opportunity to bust Gully and his crew for the San Pedro shooting, including their drug enterprise and money. He additionally throws in potential glory behind such a high-profile coup, further incentivizing the dirty cop with a cash bonus. Nix agrees, unable to subdue his greed for such a fruitful opportunity. WTF moment number four, the setup. Leon's rift with Franklin has left him devoid of quality product. CJ suggests a family connect and takes Leon and the crew to meet with them. The vibes must apparently be going around because upon arrival, Leon and his gang sense that something's up. When the other side reveals themselves, the collective makes a mad dash for the car, nearly dodging a setup attempt courtesy of the unforgiving street gang. WTF moment number three, a threat and a promise. An angered Officer Nix pays Alton a visit and demands double his weekly payment for Franklin's alleged attempt on his life via setup with Scully's crew. He also threatens physical harm against the Patriarch and his son. Nix's terror is only thwarted by Irene's presence, the rogue investigative reporter who's looking into Franklin's story and activity. WTF moment number two, political football. Alton briefs Franklin on Nix's threats. Then, Sissy suggests a more productive road to solving Franklin's mounting issues with the gangs and the cops. Politics. She reveals that she's bridging a gap with Paul Davis, a character we've yet to meet on screen, but a seemingly powerful one with connections to the mayor. Sissy's contribution to that campaign is a major chess move in the affirmative for Franklin's enterprise. And WTF moment number one, take it in blood. Also finally returns home, only to find his people slaughtered with the number $100,000 written in blood on his kitchen floor. He then feverishly searches for the children, who we literally just saw him entertaining at the prior birthday party scene. Make no mistakes, Fuentes committed an act of war with this reckless maneuver against not only Oso, but Reed by association, which means the CIA could potentially come crashing down on the arrogant police captain. 
Some lingering thoughts before we end today's video. This episode dealt with the theme of deception via setups. Franklin set up Scully, CJ's cousin set up Leon, and Nix believes Franklin set him up to take a fall by a rival gang. The title was initially misleading for this commentator, as I thought it simply pertained to weight in terms of drug output. However, the weight of bad decisions defined this episode more critically. Franklin's decision to move against Scully, Tanase's decision to help Franklin, Nix's decision to doubly extort Franklin, Alta's decision to meet with Irene, Sissy's decision to jump into the political arena, Reed's decision to underpay Fuentes, and Fuentes' decision to slaughter Oso's people will all have major consequences on the season going forward. Speaking of Tanase, she has been a thorough ally for Franklin during this tumultuous period in his journey thus far. Let's hope that continues and she's not gaining his trust just to switch up later. Someone with as much as Franklin to lose naturally attracts vultures, but needs loyal people like Tanase has presented herself to be. Plus, she's really fly. She's got that 90s Tamala Jones thing going, so fingers crossed for her. I get the feeling that Irene Abbe, the relentless investigative reporter tracking Franklin and his associates, is based on Gary Webb, the former San Jose Mercury News reporter who exposed the CIA's involvement in the drug trade back in the 90s via his Dark Alliance series. If that parallel holds true, then that spells bad news for the nonstop truth seeker. I'll be doing a video explaining this in depth soon. And lastly, just what is going on with Franklin in the decision-making department? His choice to get 10 toes into the gang war was foolish, even given the ramifications. And to his Sully? It's simply unlike him. The Franklin Saint we're used to seeing is as cerebral as they come, even at his young age. That Franklin would have chosen a suspension of business for the warring factions rather than the war itself. That Franklin would have scoped out Scully's gang extensively before sending in his cop on the take, further fueling ill will and discontent. He'd better get it together soon. Patching things up with Leon would be a critical start to getting things back on track. And that's all for this one. What did you think of Wait? And what do you think will occur tonight in episode 3? Be sure to drop me your thoughts in the comments below. As always, I thank you for watching today's video. If you liked today's video, go ahead and drop a dollar on that cash app for us, hit the like button, share it with your friends who are fans of Snowfall, and subscribe for more content such as this. Also, be sure to hit the bell notification so you'll know every video that I'm dropping. This is Rudy P. Magic of Rudy P. Magic Beats, and have a blessed one until the next one. Peace, y'all.